How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is topic nine, redox processes, volume number three, where we look at redox titrations. Let's go. All right, redox processes, volume three, we look at redox titrations. We look at redox titrations and indicators, and then we look at biochemical oxygen demand. The IB understandings focus around the Winkler method, which looks at biochemical oxygen demand, and then we look at using a range of different reactions for redox titrations. So, as it, with an acid-base titration, a redox titration work uses the unknowns to determine the unknown of a substance in a solution. But in this case, a redox reaction between the two reactions involves an equivalence point that indicates when all of the electrons have been transferred. So an acid-base reaction was a neutralization between an acid and a base, and we needed an indicator. In a redox titration, we use both the oxidant and the reductant and react those until the reaction has been completed. Now, this is more difficult for a redox titration because it's not an acid-base reaction, so we can't use an indicator. But most of the time, redox titrations involved a coloured species. For, so for instance, the permanganate ion, MnO4- minus, is a purple colour, and when it is reduced to Mn2+, it's a clear colour. So we can see a colour change just based on the species themselves. So we don't need to add an indicator, usually. However, sometimes an indicator that we might add might be starch, because starch can help us identify the presence of iodine. So starch is one that you might add during a redox process. So for a titration, we undergo the exact same steps as we would in a acid-base reaction. So the first thing we need to do is read the question carefully, identifying all the key things. So here we've got Fe2 plus converted into Fe3 plus. It required a certain amount of K2Cr2072 minus potassium dichromate, and they've told us what it's been converted into. The question says, calculate the percentage of mass of iron in the sample. Now, the problem here is they haven't given us an equation. So what we need to do is balance the chemical equation according to the COHES method. So this is where you need to get good at balancing your redox reactions and trying to do it in one very quick step. They told us that Fe2 plus was converted into Fe3 plus, so I can write the reaction for that by adding an electron to the right hand side. The dichromate was converted into chromium ions. Now I've omitted the potassium because the potassium is a spectator. But then I need to balance for my dichromate by following the, the COHES method. The key elements, oxygen, hydrogen, electrons, states. So after I've done that, I've worked out that the, uh, the, the electrons is 12 plus on the left hand side and six plus on the right hand side. So I need to add six electrons to the left hand side to balance for the charge. Now because I've got six electrons in the reduction reaction, I need to multiply the ion by six to balance for those electrons. Once I've done my multiplication, I keep the things on the left hand side on the left hand side and the things on the right hand side on the right hand side, and then I will get my balanced chemical equation. Now that in itself would be a step and you would get some marks for doing that step. Most of the time in a simple IB titration, they're likely to give you that equation. So you can simply use the stoichiometric ratios from the equation that we've been given. But here's our balanced chemical equation. After we've done that, we can then go through and identify some of the things we've, that we've been given. So we were told that we have 23.30 centimetres cubed of dichromate with a certain concentration. So we start with the thing that we know some information about. So I can work out the number of moles of the dichromate, and then that will allow me to work out the number of moles of the ion. So the number of moles of dichromate, remembering the formula for solutions, N equals C times V, where V must be in decimeters cubed. Don't forget to change it to decimeters cubed. So doing that calculation, I can work out the number of moles of the dichromate that reacted with the iron in the sample. So we have 4.52 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of the dichromate. Now I use my ratio, the thing that we want over the thing that we've got. So the number of moles of Fe2 plus is 6 over 1 
times the number of moles of the dichromate ions. So it's six times 4.52 times 10 to the minus four. Doing that calculation, I can work out the number of moles of F2. Oh, F Fe2 plus, sorry. Now what I need to do is to work out the mass of iron. Now all of the Fe2 plus was produced from Fe, so I need to multiply my number of moles by the molar mass of iron. Referring to the data book, the molar mass of iron is 55.85, so I can work out the mass of iron that was present in my sample. Now my sample was quite big and didn't all contain iron, it was some kind of ore. So I expect this mass to be lower than the mass of the sample, otherwise it just wouldn't make sense. So now it asks for us to calculate the percentage by mass of iron in the sample. So what we do here is we get our mass of iron that we've calculated and we divide it by the mass of the sample, which in this case was 0.792. And then we multiply that by 100 to get it to a percent. Now I can only use three significant figures here, so my percentage by mass is 54.3%. Okay, the second example. Kismel contains ammonium iron sulfate as a source of iron. 6.5 grams of kismel is made up to 250 centimeters cubed with dilute sulfuric acid. 25 centimeters cubed of this solution was reacted with potassium permanganate. And then they tell us what the reaction was. Calculate the percentage by mass of iron 2 in the original fertilizer and express in parts per million. Now, what you need to do here is, again, write a chemical equation for the process. So have a go at doing that right now. Here it is. If you had a go at doing that, here is the equation, the fully balanced chemical equation. Again, they might give that to you in the question. Now what we need to do is work with the thing that we've been given information about. So we've been given information about MnO4 minus. So we start with finding the number of moles of MnO4 minus. That was our titer. So we calculate the number of moles, C times V, remembering to change your volume into decimeters cubed. And that will allow us to find the number of moles of the MnO4 minus. Doing that calculation, we work that out to be 0 0.000235 mole. Now, what I need to do is use my stoichiometric ratio to find the number of moles of Fe2+. So again, thing that we want over the thing that we've got. But we need to be careful here because we're working out the number of moles of Fe2+, in a 25 centimeter cubed aliquot, not all of the sample. So I use my stoichiometric ratio, five times the number of moles of MnO4, to work out the number of moles of Fe2 plus I had in that small sample, in the 25 centimeters cubed. But if we go back to the question, we actually had a sample that was 250 centimeters cubed, so a much, much bigger bottle. So what we need to do here is we need to scale this up. So think about this, how many times could I take 25 mils out of a 250 mil volumetric flask? Well, I could do that 10 times. So I do the size of my volumetric flask divided by the size of my aliquot times by the number of moles of the Fe3+. Think about scaling it up. How many more times could I do this analysis? So I work that out to be 0.0118 moles, which is in the 250 mil volumetric flask. Now that is the number of moles that was in the sample because all of the sample went into the volumetric flask. So now I can find the mass of iron that was in the sample by multiplying by the molar mass of iron, which gives me my mass of iron in this fertilizer sample, which in this case is 0 0.656 grams. So I've got my mass of iron in grams, and then now it actually says to work out the percentage by mass. So again, I'm going to work out the percentage, which will be my mass 0 0.656 over the mass of the sample, which was 6.50 multiplied by 100. That gives me 10.1%. I've actually forgotten here to write it as parts per million, but ask in the comments below and I'll do that calculation. All right, the last part of this video is looking at biochemical oxygen demand. So a redox titration can be used to determine the amount of dissolved oxygen in water. 
This is known as the biochemical oxygen demand. And this process is used is using a method called the Winkler method. Now the Winkler method has a series of reactions used to determine the amount of oxygen in a sample. But the important thing is that for one mole of oxygen, we have four moles of thiosulfate used. So the, the stoichiometric ratio is one to four. The IB won't ask you to remember that series of complex equations, but they will ask you to identify the ratio. So for every one mole of oxygen, we need to add four moles of thiosulfate. So here's an example. A 500 centimetre cubed sample of water was collected and rested for dissolved, for dissolved oxygen by the addition of MnSO4 in basic solution, followed by the addition of acidified Ki. It was found that 12.5 centimetres cubed of sodium thiosulfate was required to react with the iodine produced. Calculate the dissolved oxygen content. Now they haven't given you the formulas, but they do want you to know the relationship. So where do we start? We start by calculating the number of moles of the thiosulfate solution. Concentration 0 0.0500 multiplied by the volume converted into decimeters cubed gives us the number of moles of thiosulfate used in the titer. Then we can simply use the relationship between thiosulfate and oxygen to work out the number of moles of oxygen. It's a one to four ratio. So the number of moles of oxygen will be a quarter of the number of moles of the thiosulfate. So to determine the number of moles of oxygen in this sample, we divide the number of moles of the thiosulfate by four, which gives us 1.56 times 10 to the minus four mole. Once we've worked out the number of moles of oxygen, we can work out the mass of oxygen that was in this sample by multiplying it by the molar mass. We want to find out the dissolved oxygen content in grams per decimeter cubed. So this is going to allow me to work out the amount of grams in our sample, which was 0 0.00500 grams. Now, going back to the question. I didn't have a decimeter cubed of sample. I only had 500 centimeters cubed. So that's my mass in 500 centimeters cubed. So how do I put this into grams per decimeter cubed? Well, what I need to do is double it. Because my, my sample is only 500 centimeters cubed, to get it into a decimeter cubed, I would need to multiply it by two. So my number of moles of oxygen will be 0 0.005 times a thousand over 500 because we want a thousand centimeters cubed we had 500 so it's just like multiplying it by two which gives us our mass of oxygen in one decimeter cubed all right volume three some top tips no indicator for redox reactions generally sometimes starch might be added and remember for the bod we have one mole of oxygen per four moles of thiosulfate. So it's a one to four relationship. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.